Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. 2011 has been a year of turbulence, economically, politically, and for many folks, personally. But one of the benefits of being part of a university and medical center is the power of hope. Hope for the next medical breakthrough, hope to educate and inspire future leaders, even hope for Commodore sports fans. We start with a story that has hope written all over it. ViewCast Carol Bartu tells us about the Next Steps program and the powerful impact it's having on young adults with special needs and the Vanderbilt students helping them. It's a graduation unlike any other at Vanderbilt. We are so very proud of our first six graduating students. This is the first ceremony of the Next Steps program, a two-year college experience for students with intellectual disabilities. 100 Vanderbilt students are involved in Next Steps. They're volunteers, peer ambassadors, and tutors, bringing signature Vanderbilt love and caring to bear on these special young peers. That was gonna be luck, though, too. Huh? Okay. Before graduation day, Next Steps Ambassador Daniel Gore hangs out with Sean Faulkner. That was, that was not, that's the blue solid ball. Okay. I mean, it's going to be sad just because I've known him for over a year, and I don't know the next time I'm going to see him. But I'm also happy at the same time because he's going to move on to better things. Daniel knows the value of this friendship. He has a brother back at home with autism. They just try to have fun and be good people, and that's really, really respectable. And that's what I miss about not seeing my brother anymore. Ambassadors like Daniel offer the camaraderie that is so essential in any college experience and so rare for young people like Sean. Side pocket. They deserve so much more. They don't deserve to be treated like poorly. And I'm just glad that I'm on a campus where students with regardless of any problem they have, whether it's a disability or just anything they have in general, like study problems, that they're treated kindly and the same as everybody else. Delete one more time, the backspace, yeah. But the same as everybody else means next step students have to work hard too. You did five through 13 at home. On Mondays, Sean meets with Vanderbilt student and football player Chris Marr for tutoring. Looking downfield, throws that ball, it's picked off! Chris and Sean bonded over a mutual love of sports. Chris says lessons learned in Next Steps are not just for students like Sean. He learned plenty too. Everyone does not see the world like you do through, through your lens. Um, everybody comes from a different place. Everybody has a different internal working model. The love and caring in Next Steps clearly cuts both ways. Peer ambassadors and volunteers have even changed their majors because of the lessons these young students teach them. The stories that they can tell you or me of the experiences that they've had and the way it has changed the perceptions of their professors about their own abilities and the ambassadors, their perceptions. Um, so we're, we're changing people's opinions and we're opening doors. So graduates come to this day with fond college memories. Like most graduates, they say it's all about the friends they've made along the way. And Chris Marvin and uh, the professors and everybody involved that helped me get this far probably meant more to me than just the program itself. The friendships serve as an anchor to Vanderbilt. They are alumni now. This really is a beginning. You are now part of the Vanderbilt community. And six young people are sent off to the next steps from here. For ViewCast, I'm Carol Bartu. You can learn more about the Next Steps program on vanderbilt.edu, search Next Steps. You can read a feature on the program in the January edition of Vanderbilt Medicine Magazine. Follow senior linebacker Chris Marv and the rest of the Commodores and get the latest bowl action on vanderbilt.edu slash bowl. If someone stopped breathing, would you know how to save them? A Vanderbilt senior almost died as a little girl and was saved by her quick-thinking dad and CPR. That second chance at life propelled Vandy senior Kristen Katoy into a mission that's surpassing her wildest dreams.
One thing my mom said was that they've never had a bad day since that one. When Vanderbilt student Kristen Katoy was just five years old, she stopped breathing and went into cardiac arrest. And neither of my parents knew CPR, but they rushed me over to a neighbor's house. He was a surgeon, and he taught my dad on the fly how to teach CPR, and they both were able to save my life. That terrifying day led Kristen and her family on a mission to equip others with those same life-saving skills. Um, we are all student instructors, and we're part of the organization Vanderbilt Emergency Medical Society. Today, Kristen and a team of highly trained undergrads are fulfilling Kristen's dream to teach CPR to as many people as possible. Now you know how to perform the most important part of CPR. Well, you never know when someone could have a problem in front of you, and you would have the ability to help them. And so at all times, CPR is something where it's so much better to know it and not need it than to need it and not know it. Mm -hmm. That looks great, though. Ooh. Very well done. The American Heart Association certification teaches adult and infant CPR along with the Heimlich maneuver. It's open to all Vanderbilt students, faculty, and staff. Kristen says the trainers donate their time and the class is free. I don't think you should have to pay you know, 50 or $60 to learn something that at some point you could use to save someone else's life. While holding the airway open, pinch the nose closed with your thumb. On this day, Vanderbilt sociology professor and new dad, Tony Brown and his family, are all taking part in the class. It was important to take this class because of Brooklyn Brown, who's sitting on my lap. We all want to be certified in case there's an accident, and we want to be prepared so we can save her life. Never in the history of CPR has there ever been a case of someone getting any sort of disease or infection from giving breath. Katoy is majoring in molecular and cellular biology and plans to expand her interest in medicine in dental school. One thing she'll continue to do is spread the word about CPR. Everyone has the skills to save someone else's life, but it's just whether or not you're willing to spend two or three hours to learn them. CPR is something that everyone needs to know, and you never know when you're going to need it. The American Heart Association says CPR given immediately can double or triple a victim's chance of survival. Contact the American Heart Association for CPR classes anywhere in the country. If you're a Vandy student, faculty, or staff member who doesn't already take CPR training through the Med Center, you can take one of Kristen's classes for free. Just go to vanderbilt.edu, search CPR. We all know when you go to the doctor or hospital, you want to be treated like a real person, not just a medical condition. A Vanderbilt University Medical Center surgeon believes this so strongly, he's teaching a unique and very personal class to Vanderbilt undergrads interested in medicine. ViewCast Barb Kramer shows us how the class combines medicine and memories. I can see the frustration on Mr. Pointer's face. I can't imagine how frustrating it would be to go from a very healthy and active individual to not being able to speak or move part of your body. They speak from knowing about illness. It was a little disheartening to send her away without being able to say, this is what causes your seizure. And, and tell about it through different eyes. Of course, going into a room full of cancer patients is always disheartening. But judging from her x-rays, she must be having more pain than others. She looks fragile and scared. Every day I'm presented with difficulties like this, and I must make do with what I have. What is he referring to there, do you think? In class, they tell stories of family or friends through the eyes of a doctor or nurse. It's part of Vanderbilt's Center for Medicine, Health, and Society. Also supporting this year's class was an innovation grant from the Curb Center at Vanderbilt. You know, this is kind of what we we're investigating all along. Dr. Scott Pearson, a surgeon at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, developed the class for undergraduate students planning health care careers. He says the patient's story is important. So oftentimes we know about their illness, but we don't know about the person and what's important to them. If we know all of that, I think we can give them better care. But at this moment, I can see a look of fear hiding in his eyes. To make that point, guest physicians and professors talk about spirituality, medicine, and patience. I took a deep breath, put on a smile, and walked into the exam room. Hi, Mindy. It's so good to see you, I said. Vanderbilt senior Rachel Bernstein's entry is told from a doctor's point of view, the patient, her cousin with breast cancer. The moment my eyes met Mindy's, the glassy film covering her eyes shattered as every sheltered ounce of pain, fear, and anxiety fell from her face and flooded her lap. I sat there, held her hand, and just listened. The call came over, my partner and I sprinted out of the coffee shop and jumped into the ambulance. Twelve blocks away, we can make it quick, I thought to myself as I turned up the sirens and pushed hard on the gas. 
For Vanderbilt Jr. Matthew Goldstein, it's about his grandfather being treated by emergency responders. We quickly arrived and found Mrs. Marino sitting on the floor with her husband, and he appeared unconscious and not breathing. A police officer arrived as we inserted an IV line into his right arm. Dr. Pearson hopes what these students learn here will change what they become. They have already changed him. They invigorate me um, in my medical practice because of their enthusiasm and their desire to just investigate and, and interest in patients. Rachel heads to medical school in the fall with a new outlook. This class really reminds you that every patient is an individual and you really need to cater how you treat an illness to that patient and their perspectives <coughs> on their illness. Mrs. Marino embraced me before we walked out. Matthew has one more year at Vanderbilt before med school, but already he has put the lessons into learning. I work at a free health clinic in Nashville and my first day I had a woman come in and sit down and cry to me about her life and how she's worried about her life. And without this class, I would have been shocked and I wouldn't have known what to do. But as she was wheeled off, she turned around and in her, in her woozy stupor smiled and said, Doctor, thanks for making me feel better. I knew I had done my job. And the lessons continue. For ViewCast, I'm Barb Kramer. Must have been in a place so dark You couldn't feel the light Reaching for you through that stormy cloud Country stars Rascal Flatts have become like family to the folks at the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt. So far they've donated more than two and a half million dollars. But what's most precious is the time they give to making those young patients feel special. It just makes me so proud and honored to be affiliated with such an amazing hospital. Now the oak trees are swaying in the early autumn breeze. A golden sun is shining on my face. We leave you with a beautiful performance from the Vanderbilt Orchestra. From all of us here at ViewCast, here's to a very happy and healthy new year.